you're ready to learn to sew. You're in the right place. <laughs> Sewing will make you more creative. It gives you a chance to see your ideas out in the real world where you can touch them and share them. Sewing is therapeutic. It gives you a chance to let your insides match your outsides so you can calm and grow your spirit. Sewing is good stewardship. It is a way for us to care for the resources of this world and care for the people in it. And sewing is fun. It's a chance to grow a skill that rewards you with real joy. My name is Deborah Mobies of Whipstitch. Over the years, I've been privileged to teach over 20,000 people to sew face-to-face -face and online. In my retail shop that won Best of Atlanta every year it was open, through my best-selling books that have sold over 120,000 copies, through my online subscription clubs where I've hosted more than 12,000 unique members, and now you. This is the How to Sew Quick Start Guide. In this four-part video series available for free on my YouTube channel, I get you started as fast as possible sewing in a straight line so that you can begin to tackle the sewing projects that you want to make. We're going to walk through step-by-step -step everything that you need to know to actually get started with your machine. We're going to talk about tools and supplies, the parts of the sewing machine, how to thread the machine and wind the bobbin, and how to sew in a straight line. The videos in this quick start series cover the basics because the goal is to get you sewing as soon as possible. In this video, we're going to cover all of the tools and supplies that you might need in order to successfully sew. I'm going to talk about the ones that you absolutely must have and the ones that you might like, but you don't necessarily need to get started. In our second video, you will meet your machine and we'll go through every part on the machine so that you know just what it's called and what it does. Our third video, we thread the machine and wind the bobbin so that you can make your first stitches. And in the fourth video of the How to Sew Quick Start series, you'll sew in a straight line. It's very tempting to start out your life of sewing and the lessons that you're going to pursue by looking at the sewing machine because it's iconic and exciting. But your sewing machine isn't actually the most important tool that you can have for sewing. In fact, every sewing machine ever in the history of the world works exactly the same way because despite the fact that dozens of patents have been issued in multiple countries, only one of them ever really worked. So your sewing machine, whether it's used, vintage, hand-me-down, found in an attic, or it is brand new, top of the line, and worth $10,000, your sewing machine makes stitches exactly the same way that everyone else is sewing machine makes stitches. So let's spend some time instead looking at the other tools for sewing in which you can invest that might make the job easier and more fun. Our goal when you are sewing is that you have fewer mistakes and better results so that you walk away with more confidence. But remember how I said that the two most important tools you could possibly invest in for your sewing are not your sewing machine? I'll tell you what they are instead. One is a really great pair of shears and the other is an iron that you definitely love. Shears are so important. The thing about sewing is that most of it is actually cutting. The, the thing I used to tell my students in real life was that sewing is 90% cutting and 50% pressing, which makes it like negative 40% stitching, which is to say, if you cut well and press often, stitching can be your weakest skill and you can still get incredible results. Um, my recommendation for a great cutting tool is a pair of really good shears. This particular pair is all metal. They can be sharpened when they get dull. They're nice and heavy, which is great because when you're cutting, especially with thicker fabrics, the weight of the shears will do a lot of the work for you. They do have an ergonomic grip, which means the handle is shaped in such a way that you can hold it comfortably for an extended period of time. But be aware, if you're a lefty, that shears do come in left and right-handed orientations, and they'll be a lot more comfortable if you get the one that's right for you. I love this particular pair, but any pair of really sharp shears will do. 
The second tool where I think it's wise to invest is in an iron. But I fully confess that this one came from the Goodwill. You can use an inexpensive iron. It's going to work just fine. Don't worry about me right now because this one is not plugged in. I don't iron, but I have a great iron at home and I use it for my sewing because I'm not actually like ironing, ironing. I'm pressing. It's a different motion and it isn't about removing wrinkles. It is entirely about removing bulk and shaping the fibers of the fabric in a way that you get great results with your sewing. So if you've maybe tried sewing before and you weren't satisfied with what you were making, it's possible that the issue wasn't the sewing machine or your skill. It's possible the issue was the ironing that you were doing because you didn't have great instruction for how to do it well. Once you have your shears, your sewing machine, and your iron all in place, you can start looking at other tools that make your sewing enjoyable or easier or faster or more accurate but are not at all required. So here are my shears, exact same shears. Now this particular pair are what are called bent handled shears. Um, and you'll notice that the way the handle part is oriented compared to the blade is different than what you might be used to. And that's because the blade goes flat on the cutting surface, which allows you to keep the lower portion of the handle on the cutting surface all the time as you cut which creates a much more stable situation and straighter cuts in the long run. So I definitely recommend Ben Handled Shears. This brand is Ginger, um, but there are lots of different brands out there that make a Ben Handled Shear. Um, I also have a pair of Pinking Shears, which have a zigzag edge there that finishes off the cut edges of your fabric for you. Um, a lot of people's grandmothers had pinking shears just like these. And then I always have some smaller scissors. Um, these are obviously for your thread. These are for very fine trimming. Um, I call them snips. I have a huge collection, really sort of a, an embarrassing collection of scissors and shears. You don't have to. Um, but I do find that these are the ones I use the most. For cutting tools, I also use rotary cutters. These are much more common for quilting than for garment making, but I have a smaller one that I use for cutting out garments as well. It is what it looks like. It's a razor blade on a wheel. It's got a safety that covers it up so that you can, you know, not hurt yourself with it. But it is a very thin razor blade on a wheel that you can use in conjunction with a clear acrylic ruler to allow you to make very accurate cuts for quilting. Other cutting things, a seam ripper. I really don't see how you would get by without a seam ripper. If you had a nice sharp pair of snips, you could probably use that to remove stitches where you make mistakes. Um, the sort of most easily located version of this has a, a blue plastic handle. Um, I have another one that was a gift in my stocking one year that's a little more travel friendly because the blade can be put away when not in use or replaced when it wears out. And it's got this beautiful wooden handle that makes it feel, you know, uh, like a treat in my hand as opposed to a punishment when I need to use it. Um, all seam rubbers are made the same way. It has this finger with a point on it. The point can puncture the fabric. And then it has this U-gouge. The U-gouge is the only blade. So some people will put it under the thread and pull up and that doesn't do anything. We have to slide across to slice any stitches with the seam ripper. And then there's a ball head so that you don't rip your fabric as you work with it. And um, these plastic ones are not forever seam rippers. They do have to be replaced periodically because the blade will wear out. After that come measuring tools. Um, there are two that I use all the time, all the time, in addition to the clear acrylic ruler. Um, but a, a hard ruler doesn't work for bodies because bodies are soft. And so for measuring your own body, you will need a flexible measuring tape. And that's what this is. They come in different brands. They come in different colors. And this particular one is like a fiberglass model. And they also come in cloth. Occasionally, they will come, see that hole there, with a hole in the end that allows you to put a string through it so you can measure your own body without anyone needing to help you. Um, in the United States, they come with inches on one side, inches and centimeters on the other, and they come 60 inches long. I have three or four of these in different colors. The other ruler that I use a lot is this. This is actually called a seam gauge, um, and it is a specialty ruler. It's only six inches long, and it has this little slider on it. 
that is spring loaded so that you can set it to a very particular measurement depending on the pattern that you're working on. It has inches as well as centimeters. Um, and this is great for doing buttonholes, for marking hems, especially like on sleeves and pant leg. You will need machine needles for whatever project you're working on. And um, this particular one, for example, is a Jersey ballpoint needle designed for sewing knits. You would want a universal needle for most sewing machine projects. If you purchased your machine brand new, it came with a needle in it and it might have some spares. But be aware that needles come in sizes. The most common universal sizes are a 10 or a 12 um, and it'll say universal. So down here it says 8012. That's where the size is. And you're going to want an either a 7010 or an 8012 universal sewing machine needle. In addition to needles, you'll need pins. Pins can be stored in any number of places. Um, I love the tomato. It's a classic. It's great for, you know, keeping your pins organized. You can use the sections in the tomato for separating out different types of pin because pins actually come in different styles. But here I've got some glass head pins which are great because you can iron over them and the heat won't affect the pin itself. I've got some flower head pins which I love because they're very easy to see. My pins can be decorative. This has a cute little button head on it. Um, you can have ball head pins. Those are always fun. I love this particular style because they're easy to, on the fingers, especially if you have any um, arthritis or grip issues. Those are easy to manage. This pin cushion isn't really a pin cushion. It is actually a magnet, which is nice if you're working and you just want to dump your pins. Then you'll need a marking tool. You'll need some sort of tool that's going to indicate where the stitches go. I really like a chalk marking tool. Um, it's not permanent. They're easy to come by. They come in a lot of different forms. You can use dark chalk on light fabric, light chalk on dark fabric. Um, but a lot of people like a water-soluble marking pen, which looks exactly like a pen and has a very fine point, or an air-soluble pen where over time the marks disappear. But you need something that's going to transfer the marks onto the fabric and not leave a permanent stain. The last thing I've got here is a turning tool, and this will come up later. Um, I very often use a knitting needle as a turning tool. So let's say I'm making a square pillow and I want to make sure that my corners are super sharp. I will need to poke, poke, poke from the interior to make sure I get that nice sharp corner. Um, a knitting needle is great for that. It also has a fatty end on the other side for turning things like straps or tubes. Um, and then they sell specialty tools that are similar. And um, this one has a nice point on the end for turning things right side out. And um, the other advantage of this particular tool is that it actually can leave a crease in the fabric so it can double as a marking tool and a turning tool. Keep in mind, again, that all of these are, are sort of toys, and there are lots of other toys out there. Um, this is a needle threader that you can use for getting thread into the machine because it's so fine. And if your vision is challenged, that may be helpful to you. And these are squeezy clips that can be used on fatter pieces of fabric or leather or quilts where you don't want to leave a mark. Like, all of these are great tools. None of them is essential. What I do recommend at the bare minimum, shears, iron, sewing machine. Next, we want some sort of measuring tool, some sort of marking tool. And then after that, purchase the things that bring your heart joy and increase the efficiency and accuracy of your sewing. And there you have it. Tools for sewing. And they are, I mean, this is the tip of the iceberg. Um, the sewing tools abound and lots of them are super fun. And lots of people have very strong feelings about which tools are best and which tools are ideal and which tools are must have. And you will see that again and again as you explore sewing. You get to decide which tools you most want and which tools are most useful for you. But as your rule of thumb, keep in mind, any tool that makes your results more accurate and your process more enjoyable is a good tool for you. My first book was called Stitch by Stitch, 
And the idea behind it was that you would learn to sew best if you learned one project at a time. And so we walked through a whole series of projects that were very specifically designed and crafted in a way that would teach you successive skills to grow your sewing as you went along. All those projects are now included in the How to Sew series at the League of Dressmakers. So when you finish the quick start guide here on YouTube, come on over and join the League where you'll be able to follow along with more projects, printable patterns, downloadable instructions, and a workbook to follow page after page as you grow your sewing.